Hello, fourth grade. It's Miss Kovarik with your nightly read aloud. We are on chapter 10 today, and it's called An Explosion. When we left off, Wilbur was getting a little nervous about um, having to leave the farm, and Charlotte assured him that she would figure out a plan to keep him to stay. So, An Explosion. Day after day, the spider waited, had it down for an idea to come to her. Hour by hour, she sat motionless, deep in thought. Having promised Wilbur that she would save his life, she was determined to keep her promise. Charlotte was naturally patient. She knew from experience that if she waited long enough, a fly would come to her web. And she felt sure that if she thought long enough about Wilbur's problem, an idea would come to her mind. Finally, one morning, toward the middle of July, the idea came. Why, how perfectly simple, she said to herself. The way to save Wilbur's life is to play a trick on Zuckerman. If I can fool a bug, thought Charlotte, I can surely fool a man. People are not as smart as bugs. Wilbur walked into his yard just at that moment. What are you thinking about, Charlotte? he asked. I was just thinking, said the spider, that people are very gullible. What does gullible mean? Easy to fool, said Charlotte. That's a mercy, replied Wilbur, as he lay down in the shade of his fence and went fast asleep. The spider, however, stayed awake, gazing affectionately at him and making plans for his future. Summer was half gone. She knew she didn't have much time. That morning, just as Wilbur fell asleep, Avery Arable wandered into the Zuckerman's front yard, followed by Fern. Avery carried a live frog in his hand. Quick picture of Charlotte hanging upside down, thinking. Fern had a crown of daisies in her hair. The children ran for the kitchen. Just in time for a piece of blueberry pie, said Mrs. Zuckerman. Look at my frog, said Avery, placing the frog on the drain board and holding out his hand for pie. Take that thing out of here, said Mrs. Zuckerman. He's hot, said Fern. He's almost dead, that frog. He is not, said Avery. He lets me scratch him between the eyes. The frog jumped and landed in Mrs. Zuckerman's dish, dish pan full of soapy water. You're getting pie on you, said Fern. Can I look for eggs in the hen house, Aunt Edith? Run outdoors, both of you, and don't bother the hens. It's getting all over everything, she shouted Fern. His pie is all over his front. Come on, frog, cried Avery. He scooped his frog. The frog kicked, splashing soapy water onto the blueberry pie. Another crisis, groaned Fern. Let's swing in the swing, said Avery. The children ran to the barn. Mr. Zuckerman had the best swing in the county. It was a single long piece of heavy rope tied to the beam over the north doorway. <coughs> At the bottom end of the rope was a fat knot to sit on. It was arranged so that you could swing without being pushed. You climbed a ladder to the hayloft. Then, holding the rope, you stood at the edge and looked down, and were scared and dizzy. Then you straddled the knot so that it acted as a seat. Then you got up all your nerve, took a deep breath, and jumped. For a second, you seemed to be falling to the barn floor far b below, but then suddenly the rope would begin to catch you, and you would sail through the barn door going a mile a minute with the wind whistling in your ears and ear eyes and ears and hair. Then you would zoom upward into the sky and look at the clouds, and the rope would twist, and you would twist and turn with the rope. Then you would drop down, down, down out of the sky and come sailing back into the barn, almost into the hayloft. Then sail out again, not quite so far this time. Then in again, not quite so high. Then out again, then in again, then out, then in, and then you jump off and fall down and let somebody else try it. Mothers for miles around worried about Zuckerman's swing. They feared some child would fall off, but no child ever did. Children almost always hang on to things tighter than their parents think they will. Avery put the frog in his pocket and climbed to the hayloft. The last time I swang, swang in the swing, I almost crashed into a barn swallow, he yelled. Take that frog out, ordered Fern. Avery straddled the rope and jumped. He sailed out through the door, frog and all, and into the sky, frog and all. Then he sailed back into the barn. Your tongue is purple, screamed Fern. So is yours, cried Avery, sailing out again with the frog. I have hay in my dress. It itches, called Fern. Scratch it, yelled Avery as he sailed back. It's my turn, said Fern. Jump off. Fern's got the itch, sang Avery. 
When he jumped off, he threw the swing up to his sister. She shut her eyes tight and jumped. She felt the dizzy drop, then the supporting lift of the swing. When she opened her eyes, she was looking up into the blue sky and was about to fly back through the door. They took turns for over an hour. When the children grew tired of swinging, they went down toward the pasture and picked wild raspberries and ate them. Their tongues turned from purple to red. Fern bit into a raspberry that had a bad-tasting bug inside it and got discouraged. Avery found an empty candy box and put his frog in it. The frog seemed tired after his morning in the swing. The children walked slowly up toward the barn. They too were tired and hardly had any energy to walk. Let's build a tree house, suggested Avery. I want to live in a tree with my frog. All right, here's that swing. So it goes out, out of the barn and then inside the barn, so it's in the doorway. Kind of cool. I'm going to visit Wilbur, Fern announced. They climbed the fence into the lane and walked lazily toward the pig pen. Wilbur heard them coming and got up. Avery noticed the spider web and, coming closer, he saw Charlotte. Hey, look at that big spider, he said. It's tremendous. Leave it alone, commanded Fern. You've got a frog. Isn't that enough? That's a fine spider and I'm going to capture it, said Avery. He took the cover off the candy box. Then he picked up a stick. I'm going to knock that old spider into this box, he said. Wilbur's heart almost stopped when he saw what was going on. This might be the end of Charlotte if that boy succeeded in catching her. You stop it, Avery, cried Fern. Avery put one leg over the fence of the pig pen. He was just about to raise his stick to hit Charlotte when he lost his balance. He swayed and toppled and landed on the edge of Wilbur's trowel. The trow tipped up and then came down with a slap. The goose egg was right underneath. There was a dull explosion as the egg broke and then a horrible smell. Fern screamed. Avery jumped to his feet. The air was filled with the terrible gases and smells from the rotten egg. Templeton, who had been resting in his home, scuttled away into the barn. Good night, screamed Avery. Good night. What a stink. Let's get out of here. Fern was crying. She held her nose and ran toward the house. Avery ran after her, holding his nose. Charlotte felt greatly relieved to see him go. It had been a narrow escape. Later on that morning, the animals came up from the pasture, the sheep, the lambs, the gander, the goose, and the seven gooselings. There were many complaints about the awful smell, and Wilbur had to tell the story over and over again of how the arable boy had tried to capture Charlotte and how the smell of the broken egg drove him away just in time. It was that rotten goose egg that saved Charlotte's life, said Wilbur. There's Avery toppling over the trough and knocking that rotten egg over. The goose was proud of her share in the adventure. I'm delighted that the egg never hatched, she, gamb she, she gabbed. Sorry. Templeton, of course, was miserable over the loss of his beloved egg but he couldn't resist boasting. It pays to save things, he said in his surly voice. A rat never knows when something is going to come in handy. I never throw anything away. Well, said one of the lambs, this whole business is all well and good for Charlotte, but what about the rest of us? The smell is unbearable. Who wants to live in a barn that is perfumed with rotten egg? Don't worry, you'll get used to it, said Templeton. He sat up and pulled wisely at his long whisker whiskers. Then he crept away to pay a visit to the dump. When Lurvie showed up at lunchtime, carrying a pail of food for Wilbur, he stopped short a few paces from the pig pen. He sniffed the air and made a face. What in thunder, he said. Setting the pail down, he picked up the stick that Avery had dropped and pried the trowel up. Rats, he said. Phew! I might have known a rat would make a nest under this trowel. How I hate a rat and Lurvy dragged Wilbur's trowel across the yard and kicked some dirt into the rat's nest, burying the broken egg and all of Templeton's other possessions. Then he picked up the pail. Wilbur stood in the trowel, drooling with hunger. Lurvy poured, and the slops ran creamily down around the pig's eyes and ears. Wilbur grunted. He gulped and sucked and sucked and gulped, making swishing and swooshing noises, anxious to get everything at once. It was a delicious meal, skim milk, wheat middlings, leftover pancakes, half a donut, the rind of a summer squash, 
two pieces of stale toast, a third of a ginger snap, a fish tail, one orange peel, several noodles from a noodle soup, the scum off a cup of cocoa, an ancient jelly roll, a strip of paper from the lining of the garbage pail, and a spoonful of raspberry jello. Wilbert ate heartily. He planned to leave half a noodle and a few drops of milk for Templeton. Then he remembered that the rat had been useful in saving Charlotte's life, and that Charlotte was trying to save his life, so he left a whole noodle instead of a half. Now that the broken egg was buried, the air cleared and the barn smelled good again. The afternoon passed, and evening came. Shadows lengthened, the cool and kindly breath of evening entered through doors and windows. Astride her web, Charlotte sat moodily eating a horsefly and thinking about the future. After a while, she bestirred herself. She descended to the center of the web, and there she began to cut some of her lines. She worked slowly but steadily while the other creatures drowsed. None of the others, not even the goose, noticed that she was at work. Deep in a soft bed, Wilbur snoozed. Over in their favorite corner, the gooselings whistled a night song. Charlotte tore quite a section out of her web, leaving an open space in the middle. Then she started weaving something to take the place of the threads she had removed. When Templeton got back from the dump around midnight, the spider was still at work. All right, so I would like you to go back to that Google Classroom question. And I want you to tell me, sorry, one second, let me find my question. I want you to tell me what would you have done if you were in that barn and you saw that Avery was about to hurt Charlotte, what would you have done to save her? Go ahead and answer that question and we will see you tomorrow. Have a great night.